Sublime Magnificent. <laughs> You know who it is, what's going on, when it's happening, where it's at, and why we're here today. How you doing? It is I, the sublimely magnificent big ugly himself, Omari Ellis Feo Grande on YouTube, back with another episode of This Guy Hasn't Seen. And as usual, I am joined by my co-host and runner mate, one of my best friends in the world, El Director himself, Bill Smith. Hey, what's going on, Omari? Hello, Omarkins. Thank you so much for having me back again. I am coming in hot today because there is no AC in my house. Uh, this guy hasn't seen first. I am wearing no pants. <laughs> Fair enough. But I'm, I'm telling you what, Omari, even if the AC was kicking here, I would still be running hot because of this aggressive movie that we got going today. Last week, we did a little rule breaking to talk about a movie that both of us have seen called The Raid. Inside of that conversation, you revealed to these shocking eyeballs that, I, that you had not seen The Raid 2. I had not. And so that's what we're watching this week. The Raid 2. The Raid 2 from 2014 rated R. Only a short time after the first raid, Rama goes undercover with the thugs of J Jakarta and plans to bring down the syndicate and, and uncover the corruption within his police force. It is once again written and directed by Gareth Evans and it once again stars Iko Uwais and uh, Yayan Ruin and many other wonderful actors. Omari, what were you expecting with The Raid 2? I was expecting it to be a lot like The Raid 1 when it comes to <laughs> the, the action uh, aspect, you know, crazy fighting and stuff. I expected it to be like, I guess, if anything, still a singular location. Like, it's just this time, now we're raiding some super duper megaplex that we gotta make it through. Maybe not an apartment <laughs> building, but like a fortress or some shit. Like, you're raiding a singular location yet again. And, mm -hmm. and that being the entire focus. I wasn't expecting quite what we got in this, but I, at the same time, I was. You get what I'm saying. Right. But if anything, I was expecting it to be like, let's amp up the first movie or take what take what worked in the first movie and try to and try to amp it up to another level so maybe a bigger building maybe more people to go against maybe more people going in or something along those lines i wasn't sure if i expected him to go full superhuman because like as semi spoilers about the John Wick series as those movies go on he becomes more and more of a superhuman uh and so I wasn't sure if that was gonna happen with this not that and if you've seen our other stuff I don't have a problem with people going superhuman in fact I like superhumans <laughs> um so that was not wouldn't have detracted but I was just wondering if that's where we were gonna go with that mm-hmm yeah, yeah, this is uh this is going this is going a little different. Uh so this is basically what Gareth Evans wanted to make initially. This oh. is the movie that he had always dreamed of in his head. Uh but he could never afford to make it. And so the raid happened and then the raid money happened. And so he and, was able to make And he was afforded he was afforded to make the movie he's always kind of wanted to make, which is Indonesia's mafia crime drama family story, a la the, the Departed, which we've covered here. Uh, very similar tones with uh, our main character, Eco, and Leonardo DiCaprio's main character. Um, yeah. So that's that's kind of the origin of what we ended up watching here. Uh, uh, is kind of kind of ends up going that route. We obviously still have all of the 
great fight scenes. Yeah. Uh, like we're, we're still we're still going fight action scene focused first, but uh, this one is going to break down, slow down a lot more uh, for a traditional kind of yeah. movie story than what we got in the raid. Correct. Yeah, and initial, yeah, and with that, just go right into the initial yeah. reactions and stuff. Was not expected, like, I see the big grassy field, empty thing. I'm like, no, I was not expecting a burial to start this movie or whatever. And then I'm like, oh, hey, it's uh, old dude's brother. It's the brother of the first movie. Hey, brother. And, and bye. Bye, brother. Damn. Just shot in the head, just. <laughs> the guy, I believe it was that was Beiji or Bejo. What was the guy's name? The uh, uh, yeah, uh, B- uh Bejo. Bejo, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah. Let me get back to. Pretty sure it was Bejo. I think that that sounds right. Yeah, Bejo. Yeah, we meet our villain Bejo, and he pretty much debuts Murdery, the brother of our hero, and. I think they did a similar thing in the first music in the first movie where there was a lot of silence during the like opening stuff rather than like a lot of music it was like we'll let the sound effects of the scene go especially mm-hmm. when old dude starts beating the shit out of a wall uh Ico. <laughs> oh no the first time we see Eco he's like sitting in like a bathroom yeah yeah and we're 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 kind of getting a recap of from where we last saw him in the end of the raid till now. Uh huh. Yeah, find out they swept everything under the rug, pretty but well, not swept everything under the rug, but they're trying. A guy who's trying to fight corruption wanted to sweep the fact that he survived under the rug, so that. He could use him to weed out further corruption and tries to convince him to, you know, work um, undercover. Now, this is something that I will say. I went on Amazon Prime video to watch this. I used that streaming service. And that had it in the English dub. Uh Uh-huh. Some of the dubbing for a lot of the characters, especially early on, is not the best. <laughs> That's part okay. of the reason why I was like, is this supposed to be in English? Because the last one wasn't. Mm. And But I was like, well, here we are. I, I, I got to watch the movie. I was like, I got by the time you told me like, hey, what was going on, I think I was like an hour in. Like, oh, yeah, the, the, the version that I own is... Um... Uh, is strictly subtitled and I had never seen back when I was hunting for it before I was like it was a movie it's one of those movies that I probably rented twice and then and then by the third time was like okay let's just pay the 20 bucks bill yeah <laughs> you've been here before um uh, all of those different times that I've searched it there's only been the like actually renting it it's never lived on a streaming platform back then um so maybe in this age where it lives on the streamers, they've now made a dub, and I I wasn't aware of it. But yeah, my version is subtitled. It's funny that like yeah, because you don't really get that much. Usually the in nowadays in modern dub, there's like there's actually some effort put in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that was a bit weird and a bit off putting, but I eventually got used to it. I've watched way worse dubbings of things in the past. Right. It's not like it was terrible, but Rama early on sounded very robotic. <laughs> and like not a lot of, my brother is dead. It's like, what? No, come on, man. Like, come on, <laughs> man. You know, but anyway, that was, but it was cool and it get, and I'll also, as he's getting ready and he's talking to his wife about the mission, I just typed up, like, oh, poor wife. The anxiety he must be putting this woman through. <laughs> like, okay, we're about to have a baby. I got one mission. It's, it's supposed to be a possible mission. Hey, honey, I survived the impossible mission. I'm not the one survivor. Now I'm going to go away for another two months. 
Wait, what? I gotta go away for two months. You can't talk to me. You can't see me. You can't do nothing. You can't know that I was with you. <laughs> and his poor dad over in the over in the other room, who's just buried one son, is yeah. just like not able to control his faces of disapproval. And I'm like, I don't want this to happen. <laughs> yeah. I felt for that dad. Yeah, it was like, what the hell? And then that's when uh it eventually comes back to our first uh shot of him in the bathroom yeah. door breaking and then just bam door breaks down or he breaks out the door and he's just fighting like a hundred motherfuckers at the same time for reasons i'm still don't understand why that's going on but it's going on <laughs> everybody's what? trying to fight him and it's just like let's just watch him beat the shit out of people you know first big leg stand out thing there and it's like okay yep this is the raid and he's going crazy and he had a move this this movie like last movie he brought back a, a, in a couple of these fights he brought back his fucking multi-head bang move like he'll yeah. always do the like boop 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 but also this movie he really liked the bend your legs or wrap your legs around shit move. He did that to so many people just ha ah, ah, ah. like Jesus Christ. Yeah. And like I don't think I don't think that's easy. No. I don't think you can just make a make a leg go a different direction that it's not supposed to go just by like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's like it's not easy. <laughs> no, but it looked painful as shit. Cause I mean, he's the leg, like you said, don't bend that way. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it cuts to him like after he wins, he gets up and he starts punching the shit out of a wall. And they're like two years later. <laughs> like two years later? Holy shit. And we see this greaser dude. I I forget his name. Wait, no, it's not two years later yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, the the uh, we 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 set up we set up uh, U Uko. Is that his name? Uko. Uko. Okay. Uh, we set up Uko, who is the son of a mob boss in in this area, and he is in prison for a little while. And this is this is Rama's whole assignment. Is like he was imprisoned to befriend this fucking dude, so he can then know the dad, and then potentially find out who the dirty cops are. That's the whole. That's the whole bit. Um. Uh, and so we uh we see Uko trying to court Rama because Rama just kicked a bunch of his dudes butts in the bathroom um and and all that but nothing really pops off until the mud fight scene yeah where where uko it has an attempted assassination on him and uh rama rama decides that this is the moment where he's going to he's gonna he's gonna show his 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 allegiance and and it's a pretty it's a pretty intense fight scene it, it is, is it is <laughs> for for a series that that isn't afraid to show you some some gore um this may be this may be the most intense yeah and he had a. This is another one of those where he had a lot more of those fucking. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there's another shot of a prisoner, just like opening a guard's head, is the best way I can describe it, via jaws. Pried his head open. Ugh. Yeah. Um uh yeah, there's some there's some nasty shit in this scene. <laughs> but it's cool as fuck. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that that was my second stand down moment. A lot of my stand down moments are gonna be the various fights and scenes. But the two the two years later is right after this right fight after scene. This, it right after the two mud. Years later. It cuts to two years later where he, uh Uko has been out for 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 some time now. Uh and 
uh, and Rama has finally been cleared. We're actually told in the story that he got out a year early because of Uko's dad, not because of His the gun to cover or anything. Yeah, like the that. detective getting rid of a, helping him out or something. Yeah, it was, it was, it was Uko's dad, the mob boss, that got him out a year early. Uh, and so that's where we that's where we see him in the two years later, which fucking sucks. <laughs> Yeah. God damn! Speaking of that whole like the what the wife's going through, <laughs> the wife and kid and dad. He's like yeah, had to have zero contact as well because contact. he's not he's not Rama. He's like Yuki or just, some Uni. I don't remember his fake name. I don't. But he has know. a fake name to the to the mob family. Mm-hmm. But yeah, so. Yeah, they get out of the, uh... but yeah, I like Uko's introduction scene just because clearly he's going to matter. Like, even if you didn't know beforehand that that's the guy, because he just the way he walks up and the way he controls us, so like this greaser ass with the knife over <laughs> here, because that's all I thought of was like, hey, you know, all he needed to do is take out the take out a comb. Like, oh, Sandy, yeah. what's going on? Uh, <laughs> but he looked cool. I, 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 there's a reason that was the look of the times. But yeah, but still, he had the knife, and I'm like, who the fuck is this dude? And then I'm like, oh, that's the guy. He's got a friend. Okay, that makes more sense. But yeah, he he was weird in his head. But two years later, everything's cool. And then we rent and, you know, he gets out. He establishes him. He starts establishing himself with the mob. And then we cut to a dude who looks kind of ragged, facial hair and stuff. And I'm like, oh, shit, it's Mad Dog. <laughs> I know it's not actually Mad Dog because Mad Dog, the character died, but it's the actor that plays Mad Dog. And so I was happy because Mad Dog was on the screen. Yeah. And I thought that was really cool. Oh, shit. Before that, though, there was a, like a fight in like an office building with a uh, chase down the hallway or something like that. Maybe not an office building, but I couldn't really describe it as anything else. Other than uh, is office. that before we we meet? uh yeah, mad dog character dog. oh yeah yeah it's the uh so it's the porn factory the slash porn factory. slash drug house uh yeah, yeah they the uh this is a, a test for uko uh uh he has to go there rep as a representation of his father and say that the money that you're paying us is no longer enough because you're paying us money to be a porn factory, not to be a porn factory and deal drugs. If you're going to deal drugs, you need to pay us more. And uh, the porn factory did not like that. Um, so, so, yeah, cool fight ensues. <laughs> cool fight ensues. <laughs> you get, uh, we, we, uh, this is our first fight where we get a lot of time with Ika, uh, um, dad's like number two, like his main bodyguard yeah. guy. Uh, and, and he's a really cool character and he's got a really interesting fighting style. I like how, um, cause once again, uh, Iko and Yayan are, um, are the action choreographers as well, just like they were in the first film. Um, I love how they bake into the characters ever like very specific fighting styles for everyone and it feels like part of the character design is how how this dude fights yeah and they all feel very different um uh it's it's that that's kind of i think that's one of the signatures of these two films that i really enjoy i could agree i i I do very much enjoy that about them um but yeah, so that was a cool scene with the whole fucking porn factory fight and brawl. Yeah, that's the that's that. the scene where we get the perspective shots, <laughs> the crazy like we're following the dude who jumps through the window, and then and like the camera jumps through the window with the dude. Yeah, and uh, and then it happens again where our main character Rama throws that dude through the window, and the camera flips with the dude. Th- th- those are both really cool shots. Mm-hmm. But yeah, then we eventually get introduced to Yayan or Mad Dog's new character, who just starts fucking people. Percoso. 
Procoso, who I'm trying to remember the exact way to see it start, but he does something like just enough for you to realize who this is. Like he does from- some like Michael Myers, Jason shit. Mm-hmm. a little bit like just like some stalking with the machete and this dude like like he's literally pl- it's it's almost like a scene from like from like jason like he's just slowly menacingly pacing anyway, this is the good dude's like <laughs> <laughs> trying to run away but yeah dude's intense yeah and he just starts fucking people up at night and that shit was awesome i'm like yeah beat some people up and then what was it oh i forget when i'm sorry i'm going like back and forth but that was a cool scene Mm -hmm. another scene there's another scene i liked involving uko or yeah involving uko where he's having a conversation to the guy and kind of like in the first movie where the villain was shooting the folks in the head while they were talking this time it's like five people dead or there and he's like casually like slitting his throat or slitting the throats right. of them while having right. a conversation that's that's our scene where bejo is he he he, he pulls uko to the dark side that's yeah. the scene where he introduces his plan of like all right so here's what's going to happen we're going to start a fake war between your family and the japanese family and then through the mess of it all boop 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 you kill your dad we're bosses now we've killed the whole japanese family you're the boss of your family and i got my cool group uh and 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 yeah, during that whole conversation, Uko is very menacingly just slicing throats of um, the crew that tried to assassinate any living any living people that tried to assassinate him while he was in prison. Yeah. So, you know, that was intense in and of itself. Mm-hmm. And I thought it was interesting because it looked like uh, old dude could hack security cameras now, like to see that Uko was meeting with Bejo or whatever. Like I'm not sure what was going on with that, but he's like looking at like security cam footage and shit. I'm like, can he hack security cams? Now? He 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 had uh, he planted a bunch of bugs on Uko. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, we we have there, there's a quick brief scene where he's where he's like planting some stuff on him, okay. uh, and so I think that's that that's that's the basis of what we're seeing and hearing there. Yeah, I remember uh, him getting mad at the other people for putting a bug on him when he first went to meet him. Right, he's like, "What the fuck is wrong with you? You bug me from the get go? What? You're just coming out of prison. They're not gonna search you. Well, guess what, motherfuckers? <laughs> I had to just strip to my dick and balls in front of them. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? But yeah, so Uko and Bejo have their plot. Yes. And sadly, the plot starts with a climactic moment. What what better way could you could you have to start a war with Japan or with the Japanese family it, uh, better than making it look like the Japanese family has murdered your father's right hand man? his go-to hitman, his best friend growing up. And that is our mad dog character, uh, Percoso. And so then the, the, the next standout moment I have is the park, the Percoso club fight. Yeah. That's is, the, that was the next one I had to, I love that. But then I was like, no, no, not, not. I, I, I was sad that he died. I wanted him to, be just as crazy as the first movie and be like a final boss somehow but Mm -hmm. i did like with the the artistically when he died his blood like pulling out for him it like went and per and started filling up one of the footprints in the ground and you can kind of see the shape and i was like that's kind of cool like just Mm -hmm. the way that's happening but yeah i was i was sad (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's 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 brutal. It is brutal. Um, 
uh, when they when they start pouring out of the doors, my wife goes, uh, "Oh, they're just sending like sixty dudes after this guy." And I went, "And it ain't gonna be enough. <laughs> and it ain't gonna be enough. This dude's gonna take care of all of them, and we gotta bring, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta introduce the new badass of the movie. Uh, uh, we're, we're clearing Mad Dog out of the way. Who's the new general in town?" And it's and it's the motherfucker that kills that kills him. Um, I gotta pull his name. I don't know if he's ever named in the in the movie. I don't know. I I don't. I weirdly don't have him on the IMDb. Huh. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who he is, unless he's Sesip. Sesip. That's Sesip, who does not have any um picture pictures. references. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know, but. Uh, anyway, we got a we got a new boss, who kind of kind of looks a little bit like a bad Rama. Yeah, like he's he's like anti Rama, and he's got these and he's got the little hook knives, uh, that always are scary as fuck. Anytime anybody's got those, they're just they're just oh they're ugh, ugh. <laughs> they make my skin crawl. Like not only are they cutting you, but they're hooking you. Yeah, what? They're like, and they're like cutting as they're hooking. Yeah. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that that just sounds uh, way more painful than it needs to be. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Mad Dog died, and yeah. So movie keeps going, and we're pretty much as the plots unfold and going from like fight to fight at this point we got an ass whooping on a train i'm pretty sure or type or type oh man well yeah our two the 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 two sub generals yeah. uh that are introduced for raid true uh, raid two are just like straight out of a comic book or like an anime <laughs> or something they are a brother and sister duo that only speak to each other in sign language. The brother always wears a hoodie and fights with a baseball and baseball bat, as one does. And the girl always wears big, like Elizabeth Taylor sunglasses and fights with two construction hammers. <laughs> two ordinary claw hammers. You're right. That, that, is, that is some fucking uh, anime shit. <laughs> <laughs> the fucking hammers, the, the baseball bat oh, cracked me up too. Just perfectly just murders people. Baseball yeah. swing. Uh, you know how that. hard it is to just like want to hit somebody in the head with a baseball that you're hitting. Not a baseball that you're throwing. A baseball that you're hitting, and you're gonna hit a dude in the head. That's like. 30 yards away being 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 kind uh uh that's that's just nonsense it's, i mean the movie gets a little goofy there but it's it's great uh, i'm here for it <laughs> as am i but yeah they that you're right there's the new sub bosses and they are fucking crazy but uh yeah eventually Though, as the plot moves on, eventually Uko plays his hand, and we had the scene where he murders his dad. And you know that in and of itself, I was like, "Oh shit!" Because I, 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 full disclosure with the people at home, I was out of it when I watched it this morning. I loved it. Clearly, we're talking about it. 
but if there's certain things I don't remember, that's why. <laughs> like, so I was like, oh yeah, I guess they did reveal that, that that was the subject of their conversation was the, we're planning to do this. So for me, I was caught off guard because I was like, oh shit, <laughs> he killed his dad. He's, he's playing his hand now. Okay, let's go, Uko. I guess that's what we're doing. Uh, but, you know, that leads to more... <laughs> This leads to more shit. There's more shit. Like we also, I mean, there's so much. There's so much here to talk about. Yeah. Uh, it's we're probably gonna end up skipping some stuff. Like just missing some stuff. But like, yeah, as as that shit's going down with Uko and his dad and Ika uh, at the at the like the main offices, uh, our main character Rama is getting just attacked on the street while he's trying to get in a taxi. And turns out it ends up being like he gets all freaked out because right at the end when he's done beating him up, one of them, one of them ends up revealing that he's a police officer and he gets all freaked out and he calls the dude that's like protecting his identity, the, 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 the corruption detective and, uh, and he's freaking out and the, and the guy's trying to reassure him that those were just dirty cops, like working for the mob. They were hitting yeah. Like they they were trying to hit you as a ret- retaliation attack because you all are killing each other uh thing um that wasn't like cop and you undercover the, yeah. the, 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 there was no relation there and so he's freaking out about that and he's trying to get he's ready to get the fuck out he even asks him there in that phone call he's like I'm done get yeah. me out and like no nah, we can't you're too close uh you know you got to keep going whatever uh, and then that that that's when he goes to the main offices and finds that Uko has shot the dad. They've shot Ika, but not killed Ika. And his first instinct is to protect and fight. So he just starts fucking fighting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it pretty much leads it to like the final fight. Says he's just now he is kind of just raiding on his own, going through the place and yeah at some point he's like he's like you know what i'm fucking done i'm just going to kill everybody <laughs> that's it everyone dies that's it. i'm just going to kill everybody or they will kill me that's it i'm i'm done it's clearly not going to happen in the good law abiding way that these motherfuckers want it to be done I'm 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 just gonna go in and I'm just gonna kill everybody, and and yeah, and, and then he he begins his own raid for the final climax of the scene, where he has to go through the sub bosses. He's got to fight the brother and sister duo in the hallway. And that's that's pretty. That's pretty it's pretty rough. You, yeah, I'm 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 surprised every time that he ends up he ends up killing Hammer Girl. <laughs> like I, I'm in in my head, I'm like, he just does he does he just disarm her like does he break her arms i don't nope oh no nope claw to the throat a claw to the throat and then a rip (laughs) yeah and then a bat to the mouth you gonna eat this bat boy you gonna eat this bat Yeah, he was he was he was done he was done with all of it <laughs> and in reality the climax of this film is our general just like in the raid where we have we have the big fight with the general mad dog yeah and then the movie just kind of in, the movie ends like that's the big climactic big last scene and in and in this one it is with the with the new general um uh in the kitchen and uh this is this is a incredibly extensive fight yes that took them i believe 9 days there's over 195 setups Ooh. um uh for this one fight scene it is it is it is epic even though it's just inside of that kitchen yeah it changes like six different times and and it's and like kudos like this is where you like you were kind of saying we're like uh does he have superpowers because like at this point our main character rama has been pretty fucked up yeah 
and our general is fresh as a daisy, <laughs> just fucking chilling in that kitchen, waiting for him, like snacking on carrots. <laughs> And uh, and and Rama and Rama kind of fucked like particularly before the knife, the knife hooks come out. Yeah. Rama's just Rama's kind of wiping the floor with him. Indeed, he is. I I agree. Like you said, <laughs> it's getting hot. Let's see, but uh, yeah, you said you're coming in hot. So yeah, um, like you said, epic fight. I loved it. And like you said. You've already touched on it, the different changing of the... As you said, it goes through like numerous changes throughout the fight. Yeah, it's like six different going. fights six different in fights one fight. In one. Exactly. Yeah. Um, I remember him getting... Rama got shot at one point, didn't he? Like in his side? Or is that Yeah, that? They, they, that's right after... That, that's at the end of the fight. Yeah, yeah. the uh, Bejo shoots him with a shotgun. Yeah, shoots him with a shotgun. And I was like, oh, oh no. We can't have him die too before he makes it back to the fucking wife. Now it's even worse. His wife already ain't seen him in three or <laughs> two and a half years, and now he's gonna get shot and die on the raid on the way back. But you know, he does eventually get out of it. Bejo oh, gets murdered by Uko, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Just... Yeah, because because I mean, Uko is just a paranoid fuck at this point, um, uh, and he's got a lot of problems because he just killed his father. Um, uh, but but while he's in the bathroom, he finds a wire, a wire planted by Rama, but he thinks it was Bejo, so he's gonna go ahead and shoot Bejo. Oh yeah, d- talking about gore scenes. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, have you ever seen a simulation of a man taking a shotgun to the face <laughs> at close it. range? If you haven't, I've got the movie for you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, and then he drops the bug on him like, you, I found it. It's like, damn. Well, that worked out very conveniently. <laughs> Didn't it, though? <laughs> And, you know, of course, even though Rama has been stabbed 12 times at this point, uh, he's got 12 other cuts. Um, uh, He's been shot in the abdomen. Um, He is uh, he he is. Uko has no chance. He has no chance. Like he, he 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 takes about pretty quick pretty easily and then we get we get we get the final moments of of him again like you were saying it is it is a very thematic choice by this director of that of that moment where you take out like kind of all the noise yeah and it's a very silent moment like it's silent moments when you know it's not silent kind of thing is is a very themed choice of his and that's how we end this movie, and then it just comes back in with a simple, I'm done. No, I'm done. And so we're we're just we're led to hope that he gets back to wife and kid safely. Yeah. Was this one also Sonoda for the music and the score? Um, I I don't I don't know. Okay. Cause it had a for me it had a similar feel soundtrack wise but it could have just been someone trying to be like hey this is what shinoda established as the raid type shit so i'm gonna follow that you know when i do it it does not look like it okay yeah but i I did like the score in this one as well but yeah, I think we touched on everything, especially the anime ass villains with the fucking <laughs> hammers yeah. and baseball bat. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, I guess going with that right into the final thoughts. I loved it. Uh, I like the first one more. I would have to watch this a sec. I, for my own sake and to fully appreciate it, I'm going to have to watch it a second time. Oh no, woe is me. The 
the horror of having to watch the raid two a second time <laughs> uh, but no i did enjoy it i like the first one more just because i don't know i think we've also mentioned it with all the movies and the stuff that we've watched over the time like some of the longer ones you know you feel you feel it you feel it and the first one was just the right like length for what it did because there wasn't a lot of in between scenes. It was just you're you're learning this as the customers are learning it. There's not as much of a hey, we need to do this, that, that, and the other, which doesn't make two a worse movie. It's just preference wise, I preferred the first one. Yeah, but I I really enjoyed the second one. Nice. Yeah. Um. So my my issues with the raid two are. First, what you've already mentioned, the length. Mm -hmm. It is two hours and 30 minutes, and it feels like two hours and 30 minutes. It feels a little long. Um, uh, not, not terribly in a bad way, but I feel like it could be a little shorter. I feel like there's a two hour 10 movie, two hour 15 in here uh, somewhere, but I don't know. Um, and then my second issue with this film, which is a problem that many sequels suffer, is that it very much dilutes the successes of the first film. Like literally in this movie, by minute five, we have we have stamped out all of the all of the things that we just watched in the raid. Uh, as as unimportant and unconsequential, um, uh, that's that's a tough pill to swallow, particularly when we're doing something like we just did, where yeah. you're watching them back to where you're watching them so close. Yeah, it's like okay, yeah, because even his brother like just straight up dies at the beginning of the film. It's just like yeah, bro dies. The guy that he fought to drag out of that building gets yeah. shot. He gets told that nothing matters. The only thing we could do is if you go undercover and we change the system from the inside thing and like, like, oh, yeah, cool that you just did all of that. But yeah, it doesn't doesn't matter. And that's 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 a little that's that's quite unfortunate, but it doesn't really make me dislike this. I mean, the the. The action coordination from Eco and Yayan um are just on another level and when you have gareth evans doing the very interesting things that he will do on occasion with a camera it all packages together with as something extremely extremely watchable and great for me is it in my top 10 like the first one is no but it's a very enjoyable movie yes that is a great way to put it. Very enjoyable movie. That's not quite the first movie, but it's a sequel. You, that's that's a good that's a good outcome for a sequel. That's what you kind of want is at least that. If, if at the worst, if at the worst is it's good, but it's not the first one. You're good with a sequel at that point. Uh, so yeah, so that is the raid two. And, yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go ahead and move on to next week, and I guess I should go ahead and talk about what we're watching next week because I'm going back to a well that I used that I could, one of the few wells I can go into that I'm pretty sure Bill hasn't seen things from, but it's not you know the black movie well this time. It's the anime well. <laughs> Uh, we're gonna watch the part one and part two, the first 26 episodes or so of JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yeah. And we're gonna do it in Japanese, too. Jonathan Jameson! <laughs> Jonathan Jameson. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Adios, this.